evening. Bike check, there you go. The special meeting of the Governing Board of Education is called to order by Dr. Joseph Komorowski at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, January 18, 2023 at the District Office Conference Center, rooms A through C. Um, to item B, approval of the agenda. Are there any requests to cha uh, for changes to the agenda? I will take a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. Discussion. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. I do not approve the agenda. That would be a vote? No, it's my discussion about the agenda. I do not approve the agenda, nor do I approve the manner in which this meeting was called. When I received the notice about the meeting, I sent you an email asking what was so pressing that you called for this meeting. I'm asking you now, did you consult with other members of the board or other people outside of TVUSD before deciding to call this meeting? We want to be transparent for our people. As a member of this board, I'm concerned the board does not look transparent. The manner in which the meeting was created has left the board members and the entire community wondering what was the urgency to disrupt people's lives and bring us together tonight. Please be clear so that all parents, students, employees, and homeowners of TVUSD know exactly what your intentions are. If we're gonna comment right now, yeah. I think what I could share would answer a lot of that. I don't know if the timing would be appropriate uh, if, if you want to take that, but I'm, I'm willing to I just to want share. to ask Dr. McClay, is it appropriate to spawn now when we're not even at the agenda item? We're having discussion on the agenda item. I'll defer to Mr. Robbins. You're discussing the purpose for the meeting or the purpose of adopting the agenda or not, then I would uh, have a little bit of discussion. Thank, Thank you, Todd. You. Yeah, Dr. Pei, if you don't mind, um, yeah, what I'm seeing here is that we're, we're approving an agenda and then we're gonna open this up for public comments and there, there's not enough information here for people to even speak intelligibly to what is on the agenda this evening. And I, <clears throat> sorry, hot mic. Um, I would also agree I've reached out to you multiple times to try to get just some clarity um, it is a normal procedure for the board president to communicate with the board regarding the agenda. That's not a Brown Act violation when you're simply presenting one-way information to the board. Um, and we received none of that, nor did I receive any um, information that was requested. Um, we're coming into this meeting completely blind. Thank you. I believe it's also within the board's purview for a special meeting for there to be different kinds of circumstances. And I will tell you without a doubt, we have done, I have done due diligence in wanting to be sure that I have, I want you to know that I've done my due diligence in looking at all of these things and wanting to be so conscientious, conscientious of the Brown Act. I know that uh, Mr. Todd Robbins was with us last week. We took it to heart. We listened for an hour and a half. I took notes. I've been reading the book. Yes, I'm new, but I'm, I am committed to doing that research and what we need to do. So what I want to share with you is we have, I, we have tried to do everything right to present to you the information that you need to hear tonight. And if we need to further discuss why we need to go ahead and adopt this agenda. I'm happy to read my comments now. I wasn't sure when they might be applicable, but this might be the right time. And so I can go ahead and do that. All right, I'll open, I'll, I'll open up and answer the question first. I've consulted with Epstein, Becker, and Green to bring Mr. Brenner and Mr. Abrams here to consult additional legal counsel. As per, as per posted online, it says, conference with legal counsel existing or anticipated litigation, one item. Conference regarding personal matters appointment. We are going to have lawyers present on behalf of Epstein, Becker, and Green, and then we can get to why we're here, and then we can get to, you know, whether you want to vote in additional legal counsel. It was as simple as that. I'm very sensitive to the Brown Act as well. I responded to you, Mr. Schwartz. I responded 
I responded to Mrs. Allison as well, and I, I thought no for further conversation was warranted so that I could avoid that possibility. But that's why we're here, yes. Well, Can what I is the emergency? That's what's required to, to call a special meeting. What that, is the emergency? That's what I would like to speak to. Okay, that's what I'd like to speak to. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I don't know that we need to get into the particulars on this because in order for us to get into the particulars on this, we need to hear from the public first. And, and that's, that's what I keep going back to on this, okay? I, I, I ran an entire campaign on transparency and so did the rest of the people that were newly elected to this board Absolutely. that are sitting up here. Yeah. The, the specific item that I'm talking about, I understand that we, we, there have been discussions about, you know, finding new legal counsel, potentially, you know, finding new legal counsel when the contract is up. There, those are great conversations to have. Specifically, what I want to know about is this uh, agenda item that is about personnel. There, there's nothing listed. There are only four specific items that we can meet on cl in closed session to discuss, and none of those are listed on this. It's just a personnel matter. That's vague. There's a lot of things going around in the community right now. People are confused about what this is about. They're assuming they know what it's about, and it's unfair. We're, are we gonna get a bunch of people up here speaking for the next two hours in defense of Dr. McClay, and that's not even the issue we're here to discuss? It, it's unfair, and I think we need to clarify that agenda item, or let's throw this away and let's bring it back in 13 days. Danny, do you wanna hear, do you wanna move this so that we can actually hear from the public? You know what, Let, can, I, can I go ahead and read these comments because I think it's gonna clarify some things, okay? Um, we just celebrated Martin Luther King's life and legacy on Monday, hold on, hold on please, listen, listen, people fail to get along because they fear each other, they fear each other because they don't know each other and they don't know each other because they haven't communicated with each other. So let me communicate with you tonight, okay? Let, let me explain some things. I love this district and the stakeholders. I have a stack, hundreds and hundreds of pages of doors of families. I went door to door. I fell in love with these families. I love this district. Please hear me out, All right. okay? Please hear me out. Mrs. Worsma, how about, how about we have Jen speak to the audience? Two interruptions, you're out. And that's gonna happen before we even allow discussion because if you wanna be rude and you wanna shut down a board member properly governing, we are, we are responding to the audience. Jason. No, I, and, I, and I want you to be here and I want you to understand and I want there to be transparency, okay? I need you to know that that is my heart here tonight. I love TVUSD. Right, give me a I second. think we're just Mrs. trying Worsma. to get to know what's on the agenda. Here, here we before, go. Before your, we your have comments that, are great. Jason, we'll can you later. speak to the audience? Thank you. In order to make sure we, we move along and everybody gets their chance at the podium, uh, make sure you speak and move, move it along. Um, it is a criminal offense to disrupt a, a public meeting. Uh, the, the board chair, if he singles you out as disruptive and gives you a warning, a second warning, a third time, you'll be asked to leave and you'll be subject to being arrested. So we don't want that. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's, that's what needs to be looking at. The reason I'm gonna push forward through this is only because it may make the difference in us af actually having the meeting tonight. So I want you to know that's why I feel it's important so that you can hear these thoughts that I basically you know, spent, spent the night writing. Um, since my first board meeting, I've observed what has appeared to be a breakdown of safety communication, leadership, and principled management at some of the campuses surrounding student walkouts in response to the resolutions passed on both racism and critical race theory. Since December, I have been asking our superintendent to get us in touch with all stakeholders via email regarding our goals for addressing the misinformation and wanting to build solutions. When we were asked to wait until the holidays passed to reassess the situation, I did feel stonewalled, okay? Strong leadership, in my opinion, would have allowed us the ability to offer questions and transparency in a timely manner that may have prevented the multiple issues and questions raised at the coordinated walkouts last Friday. Now, having said this, I do support our students' rights to speak, to protest, and to be heard. I do, I love our students. But these rights, they must be considered and honored in the context of other rights and interests, including school and student safety, the right to an education, the right to a school environment conducive to learning and free of undue disruption, and then proper place and time for protest and other personal non-school activities. The question comes to this, ladies and gentlemen, 
when a bullhorn or a siren is utilized on a campus, does it break ed code 32210 or ed code 32211? What about the penal code 415.5 with a disturbance of peace at school? If neither of those are applicable, I ask you, what about the school policy 5131.4 that advocates for a positive school environment conducive to learning? Now, in terms of the walkouts, there was a video that went around where kids were throwing food at the protesters. Do I condone that? I don't. But I ask you, where was the principal? Where was the administration? Where were some of the SROs? I, I'm just saying it was a global issue at that school campus, and I've had people wonder, okay? In terms of the walkouts, did parents sign permission slips for these walkouts? Were speakers properly vetted that came to the parks? What about campus supervisors that were concerned about breaking protocol with unlocking gates and trying to oversee students coming and going? I campaigned on safety. Stacks and stacks, homes and homes, I didn't care how people voted in this last election. That didn't matter to me because every household mattered. And because safety has been so important to me, and because I feel like there's been a lack of oversight and direction and people coming back to me, I am telling you, I have not felt supported. And the bottom line is, it's far more important to invest in retaining temporary independent counsel than to, than to risk jeopardizing the safety and security of all of our students and all of our staff. That is the issue today. So if we get into this and the presentation is given and you can understand we do have general legacy counsel, but we're also in need of a vision outside of that that is independent, that offers different perspective, different accountability, and different information for us as a board. And it is because of you. It is to keep TVUSD safe. That is the reason I feel that it's morally correct. I feel like it's financially wise to protect all of us. And so this, this is out of order with what I wanna share but I'm so anxious for you to know my heart in this and why the protection and those extra things I feel are needed because at this point, I don't have full confidence with what we've been given from many different realms and I was elected to do this job and I'm going to do it and I wanna hear you and I wanna love you and I wanna do what's right. But to do what's right, we need to have this conversation tonight and then make decisions. So thank you for listening. I'm sorry, that was, that was a long speech. Thank you, Ms. Horsma. I'd, like I'd like to second that and say I strongly recommend we get the benefit of legal perspective, additional legal perspective. That's why I'm recommending this meeting. That's why I called it. This doesn't mean that we're not going to take Todd's advice. It means we're going to take additional legal advice. And that investment is worth the safety and security of our kids, our students at TVUSD. That's it? No, unfortunately, you disregard the cause of the walkouts. And the cause of the walkouts were the two resolutions that you jammed through this board, despite being asked to wait and have them vetted by legal counsel, it was decided to jam those two resolutions through the board and that incited our students and that's what caused the walkouts. There has to be accountability. I talked to hundreds and thousands of people. We did not come into that meeting without doing our due diligence. It's here, it's here. And the fact is, we have to have accountability and discussions and we can continue to debate the critical race theory, but here's the thing. We are making plans for solutions and committees and ways to get information out. But if you're stymied and you're stonewalled and you don't have anyone supporting you and I can't get an email back explaining to me what's going on, and then it's put off after Christmas, that falls on not us, that falls on the administration from the top down, and I wanna to work together. And the thing that's on the docket tonight is the extra legal counsel, and that is what we should all be interested in investing ourselves in. It's important, that is the main focus for tonight. And I respect what you're saying, but I think we need to talk about those walkouts and there can be a place and a way to do it. What about city ordinances that put our children at risk? All of these things have to be discussed and meted out. And I'm telling you, I am willing to do it. I want to hear all of you. But so, we've got to think so, about the kids. So you're, yes, we do. And they are speaking to us and you are not listening. <laughs> you. You want, 
you want accountability and discussion, where was it? Where is it? With there all is due no, Let sorry, me finish, ahead, please. Yes. There is no accountability because just as Mr. Schwartz said, these resolutions were brought with no discussion with the students, with no discussion with the teachers. You can tell us all day and show us your papers of who you talk to. I didn't hear from anyone that you talked to. I heard from people that I talked to and they were not in support of CRT. So my, of uh, the resolution, let me say. You know what, we can, we can debate this aspect, but the decision has already been made. And the fact is that we so, care about the students, but at the end of the day, What decision the has the been day, made, Jen? The decision has not been made to continue with this meeting yet. That's what we're discussing. With all due respect, And the Mrs. decision Barclay. that needs to be made is, who, who are we gonna hear from? We're, we, you wanna listen to people? Then listen to people. How many school campuses have you visited, with Jen? All, with all to due respect. To listen to teachers and students. Listening to the students and exploring a causal mechanism for why the resolution with CRT passes is missing the point. We are here to discuss additional legal counsel. Well, you know, I, I, the voice box here. has I, been opened. I'm sorry, hold on, These, hold are, on. these, these point merit point conversation, order, they do. Please. Okay, you both went on a long dissertation about your, your, your points on agenda items, and we're talking about the agenda specifically, okay? We don't talk and, 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 and share our viewpoint until we've heard the public. I wanna know what these agenda items are. Thank you for explaining the, the legal counsel. What does the personnel matter? Is it, related to, is it related to a public employee? Is it related to the superintendent? They have a right it's to a know general, and to speak to It's them. a general term that was passed back from two legal, two legal counsels. One, Mr. Brenner, one, Mr. Robbins. Did I get the name right, Todd? Yeah, that, Last name? So there was, so there was an agenda. <laughs> Thank you. So there was an agenda item in place. It was revised by legal counsel. It's a general term for just district business. What? You can't discuss general district so, business in a closed session. So Jen laid out one issue, and it's safety and security. What? And and I will lay out. And I already okay. said this too. I don't feel I don't feel confident in our current legal counsel with the safety and security problems that we've had in the last week. That is it. That's my justification for this meeting. What's on the that's agenda well is additional supplemental that's, that's well legal built. perspective and vision, and that is it. It was prepared by them. It was passed to Jody by the legal counsel. And so I don't know if Mr. Brenner is here. Excuse me, Mrs. Where's my, I do need to clarify. I did Please respond do. after sending it to district current counsel, Mr. Robbins, that it did not meet the specificity required by the Brown Act. I did send that to you. So I just. Did you, did you What I would like to do is move forward and approve the agenda because it's why we're here tonight. And I think with our guests and the way this meeting will continue to go, the communication will be clear. My goal is to be transparent and to be more transparent than we've had here in Temecula Valley. And I think sharing these thoughts are important. So I'll top off what you just said, Mrs. Wersma. I believe we should be very careful and thoughtful as a board with what we do and how we react to these situations, especially with, with what's happened in the last week. That's why I've called this meeting to get additional legal counsel about what just happened last week. Jen just laid it out. There were so, so my point to that is that our students are permitted to walk out of school. They are, by law, they are allowed to do that. And what the administration did correctly was monitor that and assist those students. I personally have spoken to multiple students who were there and witnessed exactly what happened. And it was a very peaceful walkout. There was not an incident that I am aware of that would have 
necessitated an emergency meeting. A simple walkout that was well organized, totally peaceful, kids went back to class, that is their legal right. That does not necessitate new legal counsel. Hey, my friends. That does not necessitate new legal counsel or an emergency. That can be totally discussed at our meeting on the 31st That's or any other time. That's not a good sign of a flourishing school district. What? And so when there's hostility. What is not a sign? When there's hostility, when there's express. A walkout? When there the walkout is not a sign of a the when flourishing there's, district? When there's expressed you are hostility. Correct. Who do we have to thank for that? Why, why are we having... So Listen, if we have the opportunity why? to hear from teachers and other people, because I know the phone calls and what I vetted, there were in fact issues and security concerns and safety to talk about. Yeah. When you talk about bullhorns and sirens being on the campus and it being a disturbance, it does go beyond the par. As I mentioned, we do support students and their voices and a protest. However, what we need to do is move forward because there are people that will likely share how they felt tonight on both sides. And I think we need to hear that out. We need to go through this. We need to allow the firm to explain what it is they specialize in and why this is temporary additional supplemental counsel only. That is what this is about. So the personnel matter, am I, am I able to briefly speak with Mr. Brenner. Would you like to have Mr. Brenner express that? He's going to come up to the dais no. if we vote to approve this agenda. We, no, that's we're, rhetorical. We're, we're so we're that's, that's I'm, for you. I'm, agenda, and we I'm have getting, not voted to approve the agenda. I don't right. Why and that's why we need to move forward because I don't this. want you to have the fear we need of what that is. We need specificity before we vote to approve exactly. the agenda so that people know we've what given, they're speaking we've to. We've given you specificity. No. So the personnel, the personnel manner, the, the we, personnel we, matter does not have to do with firing our superintendent tonight. I'm just gonna say it. It doesn't have to do with that. Tonight? It does not have to do with <laughs> it tonight, and I'm not speaking to a future because that future right now is not what we're discussing. It's uh, additional supplemental legal counsel and what we can do to educate ourselves on what's happening. That is what it's about. We did not write the agenda. It was prepared by legal counsel. He is here, and if we can hear him out no, and move forward, that's the most important aspect of what we can do. And, We're and not replacing Mr. Todd Robbins. Listen, and I, We're I, not doing I understand that, that and, and I, I am not against necessarily seeking, you know, legal counsel right. outside of that for specific reasons when it is, you know, focused and it has a clear uh, 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 breadth and, and, and depth and there's, you know, it's being fiscally responsible. That That's all a great conversation and one that we could have easily had on the 31st board meeting. We could have agendized exactly. that and we could have talked about this. We've, we've pulled everybody out of their homes. We've disrupted everybody's lives. We've caused this, this chaotic storm over the last 24 hours with everybody sure that we're coming in here to fire the superintendent without any cause. This is, this is a clown factory and I'm not going to be party to it. The, the Thank you. So, so, so here's the thing. It's been a chaotic, it's been a vote? chaotic storm for six weeks. And if we don't do our due diligence and at least get the information and allow people to speak, I don't think you're going to get the context of the full conversation. We have emails coming our way with threats of litigation from families. We've had students write us a, a, a variety of things. There are there are multiple issues that need to be discussed with independent counsel mm -hmm. for the sake of our knowledge and perspective. And I think tonight, if we can push forward through this, we've brought people out, let's walk through the conversation, let's be transparent no. and get through the nuts and bolts. I don't question? believe our lawyer's gonna talk for the next hour. It's gonna be something we that we can hear and then decide on from there. Huh? If we close it now, that doesn't give anyone the opportunity 15, to do their due 20 minutes. minutes. We have let's a motion in a second, right? Let's vote. Let's vote. The thirty-first has an, an extremely full cool agenda. A second? Call the question. Let's vote. Do we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented? We do. All in favor, say aye. Are we voting to approve the agenda? That's right. Yes, aye. Aye. All against? No. Opposed. Oppose.
So, so Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Gonzalez voted no, Mr. Barclay no, and then Mr. Schwartz no. That's so, correct. Not approved. Move to adjourn. Second, my move to adjourn. Second. Motion is moved and seconded. Motion to adjourn is moved and seconded. Thirty seconds. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. If you could just be patient. I'm very patient. I've been patient for seventy-five years. Thirty-five of them in the classroom. This meeting is adjourned due to lack of approval on the meeting agenda until January 18th, 628.